what's up guys in this video I'll show you how to create a custom editor widget inside Unreal Engine in this I'll show you how to create this drop editor widget so you can use it right there to set dress your Unreal Engine scene um, this would be a two-part tutorial in which uh, the first part I'll just show you how to get started with this editor widget blueprint and in the second part I will also show you how to randomize with different items so you can effectively set dress your scene so this all will be created from scratch using Unreal Engine uh, blueprint system so with that I think we can get started and let's jump into Unreal Engine 5 <laughs> All right, to get started, what we'll do is we'll go to the edit uh, plugins and then we'll make sure we have the scriptable tools enabled and you'll see there are like two scriptable tool editor mode and scriptable tool framework. Make sure you are selected that and if it asks you to restart your Unreal Engine, go ahead and do that one. Once you do that, then what we can do is we can right click in here and then go to the editor utilities, go to the editor utility blueprint. That's the one we want to use. And then um, what I can do is uh, there's option for you to do uh, uh, editor scriptable single click tool because we are using this click to actually drop uh, the item. So we'll use that and go ahead and give a name that you feel comfortable. Uh, for me, I'm just going to give bp underscore editor to underscore drop two because I think I already had created one and prep for this tutorial. I'll go ahead and double click on this and bring in here. So pretty much very much like an empty blueprint. Um, what we'll do is actually right click and then do we need some event on click. So we'll do event on hit by click. and. Uh, when we do this, basically we want to click and do something. So for that, what we'll do is uh, drag the spin and actually get uh, some sort of uh, line trace. So we'll do line trace by channel. And this will help us to actually find out where uh, we are hitting, uh, basically line going from camera and where we are hitting. Okay. Um, so uh, since you cannot connect the click position to start, so we need to break this uh, input device ray and still the wall ray doesn't go in. So we'll basically what we'll do is uh, right click the wall ray and then we can split into the structure. And so, yeah, that would uh, definitely split us. Now we have the wall ray origin and we can just plug into the start point. That's where we want the start. And for the direction, we'll use the wall ray origin and we want something far. So we'll add maybe multiply it by a thousand or something. So basically go ahead and drag and uh, get the multiply node in here and we'll multiply and you can convert all of this into a single float by right click and then do to float. And we'll just put like a thousand, you know, units. Uh, that's what we want to multiply it. So from the camera, uh, from the wall ray origin. So we'll add this uh, to the wall ray direction and plug that in together to the endpoint. Hopefully this, you'll you get the idea of it. So basically we are going on the same direction, but we are just at the same, uh, same direction. We're just adding and uh, multiplying it by thousand. So now to debug this, what we can do is you can go to this in here, draw debug type and um, I will we already have a color if it hits you know then we'll see a color so we'll do for duration and maybe we'll put a uh, three seconds so we can compile save this uh, and we want to test it out to our scene but to bring it in here we actually need to give some names for the tool that we just created so go to the class default and give it a name called tool name maybe a drop to or something or you can say anything physics drop or something like that so compile save go to these uh, physics uh, scene that you created so I'll go to the scriptable you know the framework and then I can click in here and you can see if I were to go close you will see that I can actually click and then it would register where I clicked okay and then you can also see that line uh, going in you can actually view it okay 
yeah so this is how you debug and the idea is to actually populate the item uh, on uh, the point where we clicked so for that what we'll do is from the line trace by channel from the execution point uh, the we can pretty much drag the um, uh, we basically want to populate some sort of static mesh uh, so I can say spawn uh, actor from class and we'll just go ahead and select that spawn actor from class and you can select the class of the static mesh um, and you can also break this out hit and then we can get a whole lot of stuff like maybe the location and stuff uh, we can grab it from the break hit result for the class select the static uh, mesh actor and for the transform what we can do is we can use that location for the spawn uh, transform uh, that's coming out from the out hit okay so go ahead and track the pin and combine it um, the only thing that I wanted to add was in the scene uh, I don't want it to actually populate right there I want it to populate a little on top so we'll add some sort of G uh, you know G height so to do that uh, I'll go ahead and add on um, sorry add add operator so this is mouthful to say um, we'll drag that pin and then uh, I'll combine that and maybe add some G uh, maybe 50 units on the G direction okay now we have the static the spawn static mesh actor now we just need to set the spawn actor um, to do that you can drag from the execution pin and then go ahead and then what you can do is um, set the static mesh uh, that's that's what we want now for here there's a target a target would be the same as the spawn actor static mesh actor so you can drag that pin and put in there and then for the mesh I actually collect I found this book mesh which I found I believe it was on uh, sketchfab so I basically dragged it you can actually bring whatever item you want it doesn't have to be that um, I just didn't want it to make it boring and you just use cube but go ahead and if you want to use the cube it's by default it's already there so you can go ahead and click on the cube and it will work perfectly fine with any item that you bring in as long as it is a static mesh and as I said uh, for the target um, I'll just go ahead and drag that pin and connect with the yep, the static mesh actor combine it save it now if we were to go back to the scriptable tools from that selection option now I can click and you can see it is actually populating uh, 50 units up from where I'm clicking basically that's what I wanted the offset because I wanted to see that drop right and it basically added all this component and uh, I, do, I don't want to do that because I think for this part I want to use a physics simulation now well you can use that to actually click and just uh, you know populate the item which is easy as well uh, but for me I wanted to make it movable and actually simulate some sort of physics so to do that first let's set this static uh, component to the more so we'll make it to set mobility and make it movable and what I want you to do is uh, this would be the target and for the static from the static mesh go ahead and do simulate physics mm, uh, so it would be simulate physics and make sure you are also plugging in that target and make sure to check mark on that simulate okay and this is all we need as a blueprint to actually accomplish uh, what we want in terms of that drop uh, physics simulation using editor tool so I'll go ahead and save go to the scriptable tool click on this drop to and then if I were to click uh, the physics simulation doesn't work the reason is for the physics simulation to work we actually need to go to the simulate option within this uh, play mode okay so I'll go ahead and delete all of this and now let me go to the simulate now we are in the simulation mode 
Now I will click on the drop too. Now I will click on it and now you can see that actually uh, this physics simulation works. Okay. And this is pretty awesome, you know, you can just drop, uh, drag and, sorry, drop, click and uh, drop the item, you can set dress, you can plan your shots of how you want to put it in the scene and stuff. But the another problem right now is, um, of course, when I click on this uh, stop button, then nothing happens. Um, it doesn't retain it. So in the part two, I'll show you how to retain that as well. And also, I'll show you how to actually create this, um, yeah, variations in terms of item. Yeah, well, go ahead and play with this tool. Let me know if you have questions. As I said, I'll be creating a part two of it. And if you find this tutorial was helpful, uh, make sure to subscribe to this channel. And also, if you feel like, uh, you know, contributing, um, then I'll also put a link for how to buy me a coffee. And yeah. Until then, go ahead and play with this Unreal Engine, and I'll see you in the next one. If you have questions, put in the comments, okay? I'll see you in the next one.